Yo, what is going on guys? Jakey here. Today, I'm going to be going over a beginner's guide on how to play Cypher and give you guys some tips and tricks on how to play Cypher effectively. So Cypher is a Sentinel and ever since Chamber got nerfed, he's becoming very popular alongside Killjoy. Cypher is extremely strong and is definitely an agent that's worth learning to play. So let's go over all of his abilities to start off. So his first ability is going to be his Tripwire. Uh, it's called Trapwire officially, but people just call it his Trip. Uh, basically what this does is you equip a trap wire fire to place a destructible and covert trip wire at the targeted location creating a line that spans between the place location and the wall opposite enemy players who cross a trip wire will be tethered revealed and dazed after a short period if they do, if they do not destroy the device in time and this ability can be picked up to be redeployed so basically what this does is you can place it against surfaces like a wall or even the floor if there's something above the floor that's close enough so you can just place it against two walls as you can see here and it basically creates a trip wire where it's not possible to see from far away but if you go up close enough to it as an enemy you will be able to see it on the wall um, and it will make a sound you do make noise placing it as well and this is what it looks like from the enemy pov so as you can see from a range the trip wire is completely invisible but if i were to walk up to it and get close enough you can actually start to see it if you are close enough and it does make a pretty audible noise. Again, this is destructible, so if people get close enough, they can break it, but it will alert you if your tripwire is broken. As you can see right here, I'm gonna break the tripwire. And you can see it basically just gives you a little notification that your tripwire was broken. So this is pretty strong on defending. You can use it to lock down sites and trip off choke points. And on attacking, the main use of your tripwires is going to be to trip flank. So for example, if we decide that we're hitting C, I would put a trip right here. And then if my team was hitting C, this trip would be here so that we don't have to worry about any flankers. Which leads me on to my next point. There's actually an optimum height to where you want to put your trip wires because if you put it too high, for example, if I were to put it right here. So this trip is too high because as you can see, the enemy can just crouch right under it. And you also don't want to put it too low because if you put it too low, then they can just jump over it just like this. And so you want to make sure that you're not putting your tripwire too high or too low. And there's actually a method to make sure that you put your tripwire at the correct height every single time. And this is going to be that method. So basically what you want to do is you want to pull out your tripwire and then crouch down. And you want to aim your trip so that it goes right over your eyes. And you can tell it's going over your eyes when you can kind of see this effect. So you can see this effect. So this would obviously be a little bit too high. But right here to where it's like going straight into your eyeballs is uh, the perfect height for your tripwire. So that's how you can get the perfect trip height every single time. Just by putting it right on your eyes. And you also want to keep in mind that even though you're tripping your flank or you're tripping a choke point, it's not impossible to get over the trip on certain agents such as Rays or Jet. Rays can satchel over trips and Jet can obviously updraft over trips. Uh, agents like Omen and Chamber as well can TP past your trips, so you want to keep that in mind. Trips are not completely foolproof, so when you're tripping flank or you're tripping something um, and there's agents like Jet alive, you just want to be aware that it's still possible for agents like that to get past your trips without you knowing. Some more tips I can give with a trip is uh, try to change it up. You know, this one is like a very common one right here for C-Long, and it's a good one as well, but... If you keep placing this every round, they just learn to break it when they're executing. So they'll just walk up and break your trip and then they'll go in. So there's a lot of different like trips that you can learn, like some creative ones. Like you can even do this one right here is a little bit different. You know, this one is uh, not as easy to break. So this one's good as well. And then you can even change it up and put your trips on site. So you can change it up and put one maybe like right here because it's very common that people have to cross to plant. And so you can put one here, it might be a little bit unexpected, and then you can uh, play off of your trips. So always make sure you're using your trips in sort of like a creative way and changing it up every single round, um, just so that you're not as predictable. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you guys is what happens when somebody actually hits your tripwire. And so this is what happens when an enemy actually walks into your tripwire. So you can see they get caught, and then after a short period of time, the trip explodes and they get stunned if they don't break it. If they break it, obviously they won't get stunned, but they'll still get revealed. So for example, if there was like a smoke here, I'm just going to put a cage, but if there was a smoke or a cage and then if somebody walks into your trip, so let me just activate this cage, and then somebody walks in your trip, they actually get outlined. So this is actually really good when paired with a cage. So you can put like a trip wire 
on the wall and then you can put a cage and if somebody walks into your tripwire right you can just pop your cage swing out they won't be able to see you but you can see their outline and then you can get a free kill just like that all right guys and that leads me on to cypher's next ability which is his cyber cage each of these cages cost 100 credits you can instantly toss a cyber cage in front of cypher Activate to create a zone that blocks vision and plays an audio cue when enemies pass through it. So each cage will last you 7.25 seconds. Basically what it is, is it's just like, think of it as a smoke, except one that you just throw out like this and you have to manually activate it. You can put it on the floor pre-round anywhere you want, uh, or you can even use it during rounds. You just throw it on the ground and then you have to press F on it. You have to aim directly at it and press F to activate it. And so just think of it as a smoke basically. Um, and it lasts, again, 7.25 seconds. A bonus with this Cypher Cage that is different from regular smokes is if an enemy walks through it, it actually makes an audible noise. So this is what it sounds like when an enemy walks through your cage. You can see, very audible noise. It does not make that noise for allies or yourself, so you and allies can walk through it and it will not make any noise. This is great because if you pop a cage at a choke point, you can know if somebody actually walks into your cage, so that's very strong. And so you can use Cypher's cages on defense to slow down any pushes. Like I said, you can put it on a choke point paired with a tripwire to get those kills uh, through the cage. You can use it to slow down pushes just like that. On attacking, you can use it uh, just like how you would use any other smoke. If your omen has smoked, let's say, garage, you can throw a cage down into garage like that. Um, so that when your omen smokes fade, you can pop your cage and then get a little bit more time with that angle blocked off. You can use it to plant safely or even diffuse the spike. So if you want to get a plant down safely, you can smoke yourself off with your cage and then get a plant. Or you can use it to smoke off the spike and try and diffuse it. Stuff like that, you can use your cage just like you would use any other regular smoke. There's also several one ways with Cypher's cage that you can do. I don't really know any of them. I think this one is one of them right here. So there's a lot of different like little one ways that you can learn with your cage. There's a lot of different setups on every map that Cypher has. Uh, so like this one, for example, you can pop this cage and then you can actually see through the middle here. So if anyone walks, you can actually see their legs uh, if they walk up the halls here. Stuff like that is very useful to learn as a Cypher. Just trip setups and cage setups. You can watch a ton of different videos out there for different types of setups. All right, that brings me on to Cypher's next ability, which is his signature free ability, Spy Cam. You basically, basically you just pull out a camera and you can see here, I can put it on um, the walls, any wall surface here. So I can just put it on any wall as long as it's not too high. Like if it's too high, you can't put it on the wall, um, but you just place it on a wall. You can do this pre-round or even during the round. And then you can also recall it. So you can pick it up. And then you can put it somewhere else if you want to, if you're rotating or something like that. But you can use this to get a lot of free information without having to actually expose yourself. So for example, like you could put it right here and then use this to look down long without being seen. So you can get a lot of information without actually having to put yourself at risk. But you can see here, once you place it down on the wall, you can press E and then you go into your camera view and you can just chill in here and then press E again and you exit your camera. Another thing you can do with your camera is you can actually tag enemies. So you can, if you see somebody, you just left click and you can actually tag them. And what this will do is it will ping them on the map. So let's say they go behind cover. You can see here that I can actually still see them. And so you can see if someone's pinged, this is what it looks like. It'll ping them every now, every uh, couple seconds when they're behind cover. And this ping won't go away until they take the dart off. And so this is what it looks like from the enemy POV. So if you actually get scanned by a camera here, this is what it looks like. So it will just reveal you and you actually have to physically remove this dart. So if you don't remove this dart, it will just keep pinging you. And all you do to remove it is you just hold down F and it takes like a little bit to remove the dart off you. And then you'll stop getting pinged. Cypher's camera is destructible. So if you break it, um, there's a cooldown on it before he can use it again. And so what I recommend is you guys actually find some good cam spots. You can also look these up. There's a lot of different cheeky cam spots on every map. I think there was one here before that's like really hard to see. Like right here, it's kind of hard to spot on this roof. And you can kind of see people coming up garage as well as like anyone that goes into cubby. So like there's a lot of different cam spots on every map. Yeah, there's a lot of different cam spots on every map. So I recommend you guys learn some. You can also use your camera aggressively to get information. So for example, like down mid, you can right off the bat cam down mid like this with your cam as soon as the round starts and you can get information on anybody if there's anybody window or not. So there's a lot of different ways to use your camera. 
All right, guys, moving on to Cypher's ultimate ability. It's called Neural Theft, and it's relatively cheap, coming in at only six alt points. What this does is you can only use it on dead enemies. And so if you have an enemy corpse, uh, you can basically throw your little Cypher hat on them with the ultimate ability. And what it will do is it will download the enemy positions, and then it will reveal them on the minimap, and it will also reveal them through walls. And it will ping them once, and then after four seconds, it will ping them again. Uh, so you get two pings off of your Cypher ultimate. The first ping, it will show them, show you where they are, obviously. And then after four seconds, it will ping them again. And so you can kind of get an idea of where uh, the enemies are positioned and where they're hitting. If they're on attacking side or defense, you can see where they're playing. Okay, that's all of Cypher's abilities. And I think the most important thing to keep in mind with Cypher is to learn different setups for every map. So there's going to be a ton of guides out there. Another thing you can do is you can watch uh, Cypher mains and see how they play setups, but there's a lot of different like fun little tripwires that you can do. Like there's obviously like very standard ones that you can do. Like this one would be a very standard tripwire here at long, but there's also different like site ones you can do like right here, for example, you know, there's a lot of one like right here, you can do different types of trips. So there's a lot of different trip setups and stuff that you can learn on defense for every single map uh for attacking side i think you just use your cages like a smoke um and then you can use your trips to trip off the flank is going to be pretty much the main job of cypher on attacking is going to be to trip the flank so for haven for example i always like to trip here and so if we're going c i like to trip there and then if we're going a uh if we're going a you can trip here and then this one is impossible to get around unless you have an ability. But you want to keep in mind, so for example, if we're not hitting A and I'm just putting this trip to stop anybody from pushing A, this would actually be a bad trip because this is actually jumpable. If you come from A, you can actually jump over this trip just by going on these little steps and you can jump over this trip extremely easily. And so this trip is only good if you're hitting A and you're committing to A site, then this would be good to, to hold off the flank. But if you're putting this as a default trip, then obviously it's bad because if they're pushing up A, they can easily just jump over this trip. So stuff like that you want to keep in mind. Different elevations, um, so like stairs, for example, like even if you're doing a trip here, you know, you might think you're doing it good because you're doing the little trick where you're putting it on your eyes. But if you account for elevation, this one is very easily jumpable. And so stuff like that you want to keep in mind when putting your trips down. But that's pretty much it, guys. That was my guide for Cypher and some tips and tricks for beginners. If this video helps you out, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.